Hi, Spirit 105.3 family. Do you hear what I hear? Let me turn it up just a little bit. We are your Christmas station. Yes, I'm so excited. <laughs> we started a little early this year to bring you extra hope and extra joy because in 2020, we need it even more, don't we? Erica here with you for today's, what is today? Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday? It's Tuesday, Election Day. Verse video. Let me turn down our wonderful, lovely Christmas music. By the way, you can listen to Spirit 105.3 anywhere in the world. You can download our free app at spirit1053.com. We've got the greatest mix of the best Christmas songs in the whole world. You're going to love it. Let me turn this down. Hang on. <laughs> So good to have your company today. Hey, Jennifer. Hi, Julie. So good to have you here. How do you like my shirt? I kind of collect uh, t-shirts with fun sayings. It's a little thing I do. Just one of those things. Today, I want you to hang out with me in Acts chapter nine, because I, you know, I knew a little bit about Barnabas. He was a friend of Paul's in the Bible. I knew that his name meant son of encouragement. So I knew he was an encourager. But I didn't know he was a peacemaker. And so on this day, this election day, when emotions are all over the map, we're going to spend time with another peacemaker, <laughs> right? Hi, Karen. Oh, I'm sorry. Listen, I'll tell you what. Tune in and just see how you feel. Because I'll tell you what, just hearing these songs, they're just lifting my spirit today. I, I got to tell you, it's just precious. Hi, David from Germany. Nick, thanks for listening in North Dakota. That is so cool. Okay, so let's start with a little prayer. Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus, and we thank you that you are the God of hope. We thank you that the whole world, and especially this country, is still in your hands. No matter what happens this evening, you are still on the throne. And God, we just come together as a family, your family today, Lord, and we say we put our trust in in you. We are just leaning on you today, Lord. Thank you for hope. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. May your will be done. Okay, so here we are in Acts chapter 9. Join me. Let's hang out with Barnabas. All this time, Saul, he was an enemy of Christians before he became the Apostle Paul, was breathing down the necks of the master's disciples out for the kill. He went to the chief priest and got arrest warrants to take to the meeting places in Damascus so that if he found anyone there belonging to the way, that's what they called Christianity, whether men or women, he could arrest them and bring them to Jerusalem. He set off. When he got to the outskirts of Damascus, he was suddenly dazed by a blinding flash of light. As he fell to the ground, he heard a voice, Saul, Saul, why are you out to get me? I love it. He said, who are you, master? I am Jesus, the one you're hunting down. I want you to get up and enter the city. In the city, you'll be told what to do next. His companions stood there dumbstruck. They could hear the sound but couldn't see anyone while Saul, picking himself up off the ground, found himself stone blind. They had to take him by the hand and lead him into Damascus. He continued blind for three days. He ate nothing, drank nothing. You could tell that this encounter with Jesus, who he had been killing uh, the followers of, just wrecked Paul. So... There was a disciple in Damascus by the name of Ananias. The master spoke to him in a vision. Ananias. Yes, master, he answered. Get up and go over to Straight Avenue. Ask at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus. His name is Saul. He's there praying. He has just had a dream in which he saw a man named Ananias enter the house and lay hands on him so he could see again. Ananias protested. I love this. Have you ever talked to Jesus like this? Like, Jesus, you, you really can't mean that. You don't want me to go help a guy who's persecuting your people. Hi, Paulette. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Darlena. Hi, Harry. Right? Okay. So seriously, I have done this before. I've been like, Jesus, you can't mean me. Like, you're not talking about me, right? And so... Ananias protested, Master, you can't be serious. Everybody's talking about this man and the terrible things he's been doing, his reign of terror against your people in Jerusalem. And now he's shown up here 
with papers from the chief priest that give him license to do the same to us. But the master said, do not argue, go, go. I have picked him as my personal representative to non-Jews and kings and Jews. And now I'm about to show him what he's in for, the hard suffering that goes with this job. So Ananias went and found the house, placed his hands on blind Saul and said, Brother Saul, the master sent me the same Jesus you saw on your way here. He sent me so you could see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. No sooner were the words out of his mouth than something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. He could see again. He got to his feet, was baptized, and sat down with them to a hearty meal. Saul spent a few days getting acquainted with the Damascus disciples, but then went right to work, wasting no time preaching in the meeting places that this Jesus was the Son of God. It's amazing to me that you could go from killing Christians, putting them in prison, to preaching about Jesus. It's such an incredible story. And I love that. They were caught off guard by this and not at all sure they could trust him. They kept saying, isn't this the man who wreaked havoc in Jerusalem among the believers? And didn't he come here to do the same thing, arrest us and drag us off to jail in Jerusalem for sentencing by the high priest? But their suspicions didn't slow Saul down for even a minute. His momentum was up now and he plowed straight into the opposition, disarming the Damascus Jews and trying to show them that this Jesus was the Messiah. After this had gone on quite a long time, some Jews conspired to kill him, but Saul got wind of it. They were watching the city gates around the clock so they could kill him. Then one night, the disciples engineered his escape by lowering him over the wall in a basket. Back in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him. Here comes Barnabas. I love this. They didn't trust him one bit. Then Barnabas took him under his wing. He introduced him to the apostles and stood up for him, told them how Saul had seen and spoken to the master on the Damascus road and how in Damascus itself, he had laid his life on the line with his bold preaching in Jesus' name. Okay, Barnabas is going to bat for Saul. He's telling the other believers, this is who he really is. He really wasn't a bad guy. Jesus changed his heart on the road and we've got to accept him as a brother. And that is bold peacemaking. Peacemaking isn't meek. Sometimes it's totally bold. Okay, so here's the last line that I wanted to share. Well, no, I'm gonna share a couple lines more, but things come after, okay, sorry. After that, Saul was accepted as one of them, going in and out of Jerusalem with no questions asked, uninhibited as he preached in the master's name. But then he ran afoul of a group called Hellenists. He had been engaged in a running argument with them who plotted his murder. When his friends learned of the plot, they got him out of town, took him to Caesarea, and then shipped him off to Tarsus. Things calmed down after that, and the church had smooth sailing for a while. All over the country, Judea, Samaria, Galilee, the church grew. They were permeated with a deep sense of reverence for God. The Holy Spirit was with them, strengthening them. They prospered wonderfully. And all of those wonderful things happened because a man named Barnabas stood up and said, this guy is the real deal. He saw that Paul's life was changed. So isn't that interesting? There are so many people in the Bible, we know their names, we may know a little bit about them, but look at how God used Barnabas to bring the, the writer of most of the New Testament into agreement and, and into acceptance by the other believers. It's astounding to me. We all know Apostle Paul, but Barnabas, he had such a small role but it was really a giant role. So I don't know where you are today. I don't know how you're feeling about the election. I know we're all a little bit like, what's gonna happen? We're a little uncertain, but we have this God who remains certain, certain and consistent through every election that is ever gonna happen in history. We have this God who says, blessed are the peacemakers. So even though it seems like a small thing, by not commenting on that post that just riled you up today or yesterday or the one that'll rile you up tomorrow, it may seem small, 
but it's not small. I feel so goofy <laughs> having this conversation with reindeer antlers, but there it is. Um, I just encourage you, and I'm talking to myself here, to be a peacemaker today. You know, that's what that's what Jesus wants for us. That is the one thing you and I can do. We don't have control over the events tonight, but we have control over our hearts and our minds, and we can do the hard things. We can turn the other cheek. We can practice the golden rule like Jesus asks us to do. And trust me, I had an issue this morning that I, it was hard. It was like, Lord, I choose love. I'm not going to respond. And I just want to validate how hard that is. Thank you for loving the antlers. I feel better. <laughs> Seriously. Um, it's hard. You know, words like love your neighbor. They look great on a t-shirt. Danny Goki song, love God, love people. Who doesn't love singing that song? It's so catchy and fun, but it's not just a fun song. God really wants us to do that. And I'm speaking from personal experience, even just this morning, I was really struggling, but I wound up choosing love. And you know, it's cool to ask him for help. Jesus loves when we ask him for help. So if you are struggling today, if somebody has offended you, if somebody has crossed the line, you know, you can say, Lord Jesus, help me. <laughs> That's a very cool prayer to pray. Help me to be loved. Like we can do that today. We're not in control, but we are deeply loved by the one who is. So if you need a little joy in your life, please do pop on Spirit 105.3 in your car. Again, you can listen anywhere in the world. These are songs of hope. I see joy to the world coming up and underneath the Christmas tree, Kelly Clarkson. I mean, these songs, they lift your spirit because they're all pointing to what Jesus did for us. He came to this world to be born and to teach us how to live and how to love and ultimately to die on a cross for our sins so that we could live forever in a place where there's no uncertainty. There are no tears. You don't need any Kleenex in heaven. Christmas is all about hope. So listen to the music today. I will put a link to our free app in the comments as well. And um, at least on Facebook, I can do that. And I just want you to know today, God sees you. He sees you when you turn the other cheek. He sees you when you choose love over responding. <laughs> it's so hard. Okay. He sees you. You are loved.